who loves each of us dearly. Remind us of that reality, Lord, especially in a time where it can be so difficult to remember that we're being remembered. Walk with us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be remembered. Knowing that there's someone who cares about you and the things that are so important in your life. Being connected with others who share the dreams and the concerns that you do. These are all critical needs in a wild and crazy world that, that seems to be changing by the minute. Each one of us here this morning needs to be in relationships that bring meaning and purpose to our lives. Whenever we're having to deal with brokenness or especially separation from people who are so important to us, our lives can quickly go into a tailspin. We need to be remembered by someone who cares. In today's Gospel reading, we heard the words of a man who was broken by a crime that he had committed and who was about to die on a cross in absolute desperation to reach out to someone, anyone who would care. He turned to the man next to him, also being put to death as well. But this criminal knew that this man, Jesus, was a king a king who he needed to be connected to for an eternity. He cried out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What amazing and beautiful words Jesus spoke to him and to us, people who find ourselves struggling in our own brokenness. He said, today, you, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Those are the words of a heavenly king, a king who also remembers you in your need. We have a need to be remembered by God. Back in 1993, okay, back in 1993, in the early summer, the rains just kept coming and coming in the Midwest. I was in St. Louis at the time that picture would have been taken. And after two months of record rainfall, records which still stand to this day, all the water that fell from heaven, you could go back one real quick, uh, had absolutely no place to go. It was a summer of devastating record flooding. So bad that, by the way, it was impossible for me to drive from the seminary in St. Louis, where I was a student at the time, back to my home in Des Moines, Iowa. I had to go through Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin to do it because of flooding. It was a summer of ridiculous flooding. So bad, like I mentioned, I just couldn't get back. Now there's a story I've heard about the floods that reminds us how important it is that we are remembered and cared for. A man had scampered up on the roof of his house to escape the rapidly rising, raging floodwaters. A neighbor then came by in a boat and asked, do you need some help? The man looked at him confidently and said, no thank you. I have asked God to deliver me. Water soon rose, as you see here, about to the level of the man's ankles. A Coast Guard boat spotted him and said, come on, climb in. The man confidently replied, oh, no thank you, I have asked God to deliver me. Well, the water continued to rise. And soon the man was carried downstream by the water. He was clinging to the limb of a tree for his very life. A helicopter spotted the man now clinging to that limb in the swirling waters. Come on, grab hold of the rope, we'll pull you up. The man looked up, not maybe as confident, and said, no thank you, I've asked God to deliver me. A minute later, the man was swept away and drowned. When he awakened in heaven, he saw God and asked him, okay, wait a minute. I've always believed in you, but you let me drown. Why didn't you remember me when I needed help? Why didn't you save me? God looked at him and said, What more did you want? I sent two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> See, we need to be remembered by the people we care about and by God himself. The thought of being alone or forgotten about is a really scary thing. 
okay? In today's digital world, we take a lot of pictures of our children as they grow up, so we will remember them as they were at different stages in their life. After our death, we want our family members to remember us by purchasing a headstone or a grave marker for our head site. We want to draw up a will so our family will remember us and be thankful for sharing the blessings that God has given us. But this morning, I want to turn the focus off of us and to the memory of someone else who makes a difference in your life. What do we remember Jesus for? Who is he? What legacy has our heavenly king left us? Well, I, I suppose how a person answers that question and what they remember about Jesus depends on where they stand before God himself. Now, many people remember Jesus as anything but a king. Well, why do I need a savior? I'm a pretty good person. I'm doing the best I can. In a world where absolute truth is questioned, and the truth itself is considered to vary from person to person, depending on their own understanding of life, Jesus certainly may not be seen as the truth from above. I've heard words like a fake, phony, a mere man, or imposter even get slung at it. So how could a criminal who died on a cross do anything to help me? Many people would simply rather forget Jesus. But as children of God, we remember him for something quite different. He is the king of all. This king gave everything he had, including his life, to connect us in love to him. He calls you and me by name. Jesus was an innocent man. He gave his life as the payment needed for our brokenness and sin. In fact, he remembered what you and I need more than anything else. We need to be forgiven. We need peace. We need connection with God. Joy that lasts forever. Those raging floodwaters of sin and temptation threaten to sweep you away forever. But King Jesus remembers you now and forever. Now, the enemies of Jesus back then and to this day have certainly did remember Jesus, but for all the wrong reasons. The rulers back in his day screamed out, well, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. Now, remember, just days before that, they were waving palm branches. They were listening in the temple as Jesus taught. Perhaps they wondered, hmm, maybe this is the promised Savior. They saw him save others from death. They saw his miracles, but now as they looked up on a cross, boy, it just seemed to be fake. He was going to be dead, and there wasn't a thing he could do about it, or so they thought. The soldiers at the base of the cross also mocked him. If you are the king of the Jews, well, save yourself. You know, it wasn't enough they could kill him on a cross. They also mocked this king. They put up some cheap sour wine on a sponge and shoved it up in his face for him to drink. Oh, prove to us you are the king of the Jews. Save yourself. Come down from that cross and then we'll believe you. And even Pontius Pilate, the man who sentenced Jesus to death, did not understand who Jesus was. The words he had written on the sign, this is the king of the Jews, were actually his way of saying, okay, look you Jews, if you want a king other than Caesar, well, here he is. This pathetic looking man dying on the cross is the only king you will ever have. To the eyes of an unbelieving mob, the words Pilate put on the cross were nothing more than a sick joke. And to add insult to injury, the criminal next to Jesus joined in the mockery. He said, well, you aren't you the Messiah? Well, save yourself and us. Oh, and while you're at it, save me too. Not even a condemned man had any respect for Christ the King. Well, 
But there was one man in that bloodthirsty mob who got it right. The repentant criminal next to Jesus remembered him for all the right reasons. In absolute agony, he cried out those well-known words, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This is a cry for help, but it's also a stunning confession of his faith. He knew that Jesus could save him from his own foolishness that got him nailed to a cross. His God and his king was not going to forget him. And this was not the first time that God remembered someone in need. Think back to Genesis 8. God remembered Noah and his family from a flood that was much worse than the one in the Midwest in 93 that destroyed the earth. God remembered Abraham and saved his nephew Lot from the fire that destroyed Sodom. What about that strong man named Samson? The Philistines gouged out his eyes. Samson shared a two-word prayer. Remember me. God then gave Samson the strength to literally push down the pillars in a house as his enemies were celebrating his capture and their apparent victory. So this dying criminal's prayer, Jesus, remember me, is a powerful prayer that we can speak as well. The criminal's next words were also a powerful reminder to us about the king who hears us and answers prayer. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now at that time, think about it. Jesus is on a cross, crown of thorns in his head, nails in his hands and feet. Did he look like a king? His enemies laughed at him. They were spitting in his face. At the best, he looked defeated. But here next to him is a criminal who believes in him. He believed the promises made of a suffering servant from the prophet Isaiah. One of my favorite chapters of the Old Testament, this is just a part of it. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. But we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Who's that suffering servant Isaiah is talking about? It's none other than Jesus himself. He believed Jesus was the Son of God when he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, what mere man would pray something like that? Jesus was the king of the universe, the only hope that he had. Jesus answered the criminal's prayer with words that proved he was and remains the king of glory, and we see them right here. I tell you the truth, truly, today, you will be with me in paradise. Later that day, the criminal will be dead but he would be with Jesus in heaven for eternity. He would never suffer again. And those powerful words, today you will be with me in paradise, they weren't just for a criminal eons ago. They're for you and for me. Jesus is the king who gave everything that he has for you and for me because we know what happened in the days that followed Jesus' crucifixion. He was not an ordinary man who'd gone mad in his pain. He was and will always remain God's son, your dear brother, Savior, and King. Jesus died on a scraggly tree. I love this picture because it shows the connection between Good Friday and Easter. Your brokenness was left behind at the cross. It was nailed to it. Easter morning, Jesus broke through the hopelessness of our sin and brokenness by returning to life. Death and its grip have been destroyed forever. And on the last day we will rise to live before God forever. Your God and King has remembered you. Jesus is our Lord and King. He remembers you and your greatest needs. Unconditional love. Restoration from the brokenness of sin. Complete forgiveness. The promise of dancing and singing in heaven with our Lord. You will never be forgotten. In Jesus' name, amen.
now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's continue with our